Item number SCP-2761 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-2761 is currently stored in a lit line Class B semi-aquatic containment unit in Site-71. Clearance for SCP-2761 research is available to Level 2 personnel and higher. Research of SCP-2761 genetics is limited to Level 3 personnel and above. Though carnivorous, SCP-2761 must be supplied a steady diet of fruit to minimize the carcinogen output and its waste. Fruit belong to the genus Musa, for example, bananas and plantains, have been most successful. As such, Site-71 personnel assigned to SCP-2761 must be set aside time to restock food supplies every week. Description SCP-2761 is a genetic hybrid species that has undergone multiple physical mutations since its containment in 2005. It initially possessed amphibious and precise traits similar to those of species found within the Florida Everglades, where it was originally discovered, but has since developed more reptilian features. As of May 13th, 2016, SCP-2761 measures 12 meters in length and resembles a large hunchback bipedal alligator with a mouth structure similar to that of a bold shark. SCP-2761 possesses a notably yellow skin coloration, a pedaled flexible frill that can conceal and protect its face, and constantly exudes a scent described as smelling like overripe bananas. Additionally, SCP-2761 possesses biohazardous blood. At least 32 known genetic carcinogens and dozens of known hazardous bacteria strains, including Clostridium titani, E. coli, and Streptococcus, are present. It appears its gut flora also constantly produces even more of the former. However, instead of causing SCP-2761 harm, it appears these compounds and bacteria are beneficial for it inciting even further mutations over time. Strangely, despite all the mutations SCP-2761 has undergone, it has never shown signs of any cancers or tumors. SCP-2761 cells each possess an extremely large nucleus, with the genomes containing hundreds of spliced genes from other various species. Apart from its primary genome, the nuclei also contained at least 68 other unaltered sets of DNA from various species. Those unaltered genomes have never shown signs of major mutation, despite SCP-2761's blood being filled with mutagens. Instead of breaking down and causing long-term health problems, SCP-2761's genome will rapidly rearrange and replace large segments with DNA from unaltered genomes, inciting SCP-2761's gradual changes in physical appearance. It is possible that SCP-2761 can somehow absorb and express these genomes through the organisms it eats. DNA sets include the American alligator, the alligator gar, whooping crane, and incomplete fragments of humans and dogs. Addendum 2761-1 Investigation into SCP-2761 uncovered information pertaining to a company known as Aquagene, a pet storefront that sells heavily genetically modified aquarium fish. Their selection is primarily made of fish that exhibit color patterns not seen in their natural species, such as bioluminescence and exotic color themes. Examples of brand names include Neon Splatter Blast, Galactic Sparkle, and Hot Stuff Lava Lamp. SCP-2761 was apparently part of a set of prototypes for the next installment, Sentinel Fruit Fish. Below, is an interview of Dr. Pearl Watkins, 
and Dr. Marcus Nakamura, two employees and genetic scientists at Aquagene. Interview SCP-2761-1, March 14th, 2005. Interviewed Dr. Pearl Hawkins and Dr. Marcus Nakamura. Interviewer Researcher Matthew Liu. Forward. The purpose of this interview was to obtain information on SCP-2761 and possible motive behind its creation. Dr. Watkins and Dr. Nakamura were brought to an office near Site-71 for questioning under the guise of an EPA questioning. Begin log. Dr. Watkins, Mr. Nakamura. <sighs> Hello, sir. Sir. My name is Matthew Liu. I'm an agent with the EPA. I assume you know why you're both here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've been looking into your sales records for a while now. There's been some questionable products we have on the market. Would you like to fill me in on your thoughts about this? They are under hazard. Excuse me? Pearl. We were careful to make sure all fish are sterile before putting them out on the market. We know the risk of crossbreeding with wildlife. You're thinking that any of our fish could be produced for the wildlife then. Dr. Watkins, we're not interested in Aquagene's overall business operations. We're only interested in one particular specimen. I'm sorry, what? So you... We're not in any legal trouble for selling our fish? At the moment, no. Though that may change depending on if you can help us or not. Hmm. Alright, what particular product are you talking about exactly then? In August of last year, it appears you were starting up a new line of modified fish that would be released during the holidays. Oh, the senti fish! Marcus! Would you care to explain more about these? Of course, sir. See, our idea was to make a tropical-themed fish set, sort of Hawaii in December, if you will. And we wanted to introduce these fish as a sort of living air freshener. Marcus! We were going to go for the classic samples. Our plan was for the selection to include apple goldfish, strawberry tetras, orange clownfish, raspberry and blueberry bellas, Marcus! Pineapple puffers and banana pipefish. Oh my god, Marcus, will you please shut up about your sandy fish? I know, I know, they were your project proposal, and we agreed to go through with them. But Jesus, can you please not advertise to this man about... Did you say banana pipe fish? Yes, he did. I'm sorry, Mr. Lou. I can explain. What is it about this fish you wanted to know? It is possible that one of these specimens escaped from your company's aquarium sometime in September of last year. I'm sorry? On March 3rd, a research group of ours managed to catch this organism. Can you identify it? What the hell? Holy crap! Is it possible that this fish could have originally been one you engineered? I... Uh, I... Uh, it appears its genome is very unstable and is somehow able to express the genes of other animals it eats. Is it possible that something could have gone wrong with the gene splicing in its early stages? I, I mean, it it looks like it could possibly be... I mean, it's definitely yellow, so... But that looks nothing like a pipefish. And ours were only about 20 centimeters long. Oh, crap. Dr. Watkins? Poe, what's wrong? Son of a bee! I should have known he'd do something like that! Dr. Watkins? Please, explain what's going on. Higgins! I caught Higgins putting some crap during the first weeks of initial gene splicing. Pearl, I thought you had Higgins fired after the stunt he pulled with the peanut jellyfish. You let him work on my team? He's one of our head geneticists, Marcus. It's not like I could just get rid of him. Do you understand how difficult it is to splice more than a third of the genes from a goddamn fruit to a Ish, and still make it act like a fish? Dr. Watkins, Dr. Nakamura, if you please. I apologize, Mr. Lou. You see, our, um, Sandy Fish Project, it encountered quite a few bumps in the R&D. 
That is a gross understatement. There are 50 chromosomes in a pineapple to work with, and the perfect species we were working on only had... So, it seems that, without my knowledge, Pearl decided to temporarily hire Dr. Gregory Higgins to my research team. He has since been terminated from Arcachin for unprofessionalism. You see, Mr. Liu, Greg was a bit of a wild card in our department. He was smart, brilliant even, but he, he liked to do his own little side projects. Even sometimes made unauthorized modifications to our fish because he thought he could improve their markability. I see. Were there any incidents leading up to our capture of this specimen? Unfortunately, yes. In about the fifth week of development, I caught Higgins tempering with a batch of the baby banana pipefish. He was making them more carnivorous, more yellow. He said he thought it would be freaking hilarious if we could sneak a biting banana into the local grocery stores. Obviously, it was a gross breach of conduct, and not even within our main market for interest, so I've confiscated them. However, really, won't be in for proper disposal till next morning, so I left them locked in my office with a note on the door. If you were able to retrieve them, then how did... When I came to work the next day, the fish were gone. I asked Rayleigh if he had gone rid of them, and he said he hadn't gone around to pick up stuff yet, so I went to Higgins. He said he disposed of them himself, he even walked me to a takeaway unit to prove those things were there. Pearl, are you saying that he made... Mr. Lou, is there anything else unusual we found in this vicious biology, apart from the fact that its genome was highly susceptible to change, particularly diet? Yes, actually. We've taken base samples from this organism. It appears it contains multitude of gut flora usually found in people, along with various carcinogens. Oh my god. You gotta be kidding me! Oh, Higgins must have made more of those things before he took them back, put the originals in disposing him, and then, and then lush the rest of them down the goddamn toilet. End log.